What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we've been down here, but we're in Orlando, Florida at the Shop Blaine's World Bricklink store in-house. Now Blaine's been a pretty successful Brickling store here for quite a while. So Blaine, if you want to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your Brickling store and then a little bit about what we're going to be going into in today's video. Well, I am Blaine, as Matt just said, and hence the name Blaine's World. I own and operate Blaine's World, which is on Bricklink.com and also Instagram and socials as well. Uh, and this is inside the store and you actually get to see the store as it is getting ready to move into a bigger facility So the video could actually be how to put, put 1.6 million items of Lego in the smallest Basically place possible because it's insane how well organized everything is because I've had to jam-pack everything in Because of space as I get ready to move to its new facility. So it may look Unorganized, but I promise you it's organized and I can fill orders very very quickly to this method for the past couple of years Blaine's been consistently top 25 I would say in the US mainland so it's interesting to see how that store operates I know a lot of you who watch the channel might even be starting up your own Bricklink store So maybe in the outro we'll go ahead and get some tips and stuff like that But we're gonna go ahead and get started with the tour right now Okay, so we are standing in one of the three rooms that this Bricklink store takes up. We're in the common area of the house. So this is kind of like the overflow stuff that has kind of started in the, the original Bricklink room and just kind of made its way out of the room. I know it's pretty crazy. So what I brought out into the common area is just bins of like one part. So it's just easy to walk through and pick out one part. I'm not out here a lot because the sorting table as I will get to is actually in the Bricklink room or the main store room. So I just wanna easily walk out and then like figure stuff too. Like these are all my, my Star Wars minifigures. So I've got Ahsoka's, artillery troopers, mainly new stuff, but there's some old stuff in here, like Force Awakens stuff. Like there's a Maz Kanata if you need a Maz Kanata. I think that's the only Maz Kanata ever made too. I, I don't know, but I think. And then used parts, please, if you're watching this video, just buy them. They're like two, two cents. I don't really do used parts. This is actually the most used parts I've had in the store in like years. So yeah, go to the store and buy, these are like pennies. Like, and good stuff. Like who doesn't want dark bush gray 311 inverted slope, right? I don't know. Anyway, so that's my used parts bin. Uh, other minifigures, so just, Star Wars has its own own bin because it's just so special. You have to have your own Star Wars minifigure bin. Um, and then everything else is here. I've got some Orkai, which is really cool in the store. I just actually sold some of those today. Um, Eternals figs, Seinfeld figs. So anything that honestly comes through part outs or I just get from suppliers. Figs I usually move pretty quickly. Um, a whole bin of just minifigure torsos. So if you like snow troopers, I have a whole bag of snow trooper torsos. Um, so yeah, just a bunch of torsos. People love this stuff. And the minifigure legs as well, as you can see. There's some old, like, I think these are like 07 scout, clone scout trooper legs. You just never know what you're gonna find at a, a convention or what somebody is just going to reach out and sell you, even on Instagram or something, or from a supplier. So this is like my fig area. I've got heads in here. Um, and then your one lot stuff that goes down this wall as we lead into the store. And then right here I have a desk that I don't even use. All it's there for is just to throw part out stuff on. So like this is stuff that I'm getting ready to part out. And this is actually the most clean. I cleaned it up for this video. This is the most clean this area has been in like six months. Um, so part out stuff usually when I get a shipment into the store that I wanna part out or just stock that I wanna to upload to the store, it usually comes right here somewhere. And usually it's out to like about here <laughs> and then it just flows out. So I try to put it in my way as I have to walk into the room every day so that I basically tell myself I need to list this so it doesn't get too crazy. The order cards that come with the orders. I also have some packing supply stuff there like markers and just return address labels. Kind of just your, your basic <laughs> store stuff. But uh, these are important. These are the order cards that come with um, an order. When you place an order in the store, I just write the order number there. Very important as a Bricklink seller, I think, to include an order number with the order and maybe your logo or just image because a lot of times buyers are placing orders in 10, 12, maybe different stores at one time. You want to stand out a little bit so that they kind of know where their product came from. It doesn't come from 12 different stores. There's no order number, no logo, no nothing with it. They just take their parts, throw it in their collection, never think about you again. So now we're gonna walk into the actual Bricklink store room. This is the main room for the Bricklink store. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nuts. There's a lot of bins, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. And everything's labeled, um, so it can be easily uh, recognizable, I guess, if my brother or somebody wants to help me out with orders. Uh, you basically can look at a label and it will tell you exactly what's in that label. So the smaller bins have one part in it. 
very easy, like white brick one by two by two. And then in the order, in the store, in like the remarks place, I will show like small bin. So this all is small bin stuff. I have like my own code words as most BrickLink sellers do. This is top shelf because, well, it's on the top shelf. <laughs> That's why. So I try to get pretty dumb when it comes to it. Um, just simple stuff, nothing too crazy, but easily identifiable uh, words and phrases that we can just easily locate products. So I keep all colors together. So if somebody places an order with a bunch of color, I can just go straight to this area and I know where it is. And it's all alphabetical, as you can see, the white, the transparent. I try to keep it as alphabetical as possible so that you kind of know where to start on an order. Um, so if you go to the other side of the room, you can see black. And then it starts with blue and bright light orange and it just kind of goes down the wall. And it keeps the same sequence. So all of this is small bin. And this may just be for the black parts and the blue parts. And then you have like shelf and top shelf. So that's how I distinguish those two. Um, a lot of BrickLink sellers distinguish stuff by numbers and putting numbers on their bins. And I think that's very effective, but because I've been doing BrickLink for 12 years, I know the parts very well. I know all the phrases very well where I don't have to go by numbers. I can just go to that bin and basically pull it. Um, so yeah, 12 years guys in business, it's pretty insane, but uh, I started in 2010 in high school. And it's amazing to see how far the store has, has really evolved since then. Uh, and I've used the same sorting method ever since. Now, when I moved to my new place, it's going to be so big that I'm actually gonna have the small bins in numbers because I'm going to have so many lots with just like a thousand, five hundred that this stuff is just going to go to numbers. Everything won't, this will still be color for the smaller lots, but as I get to the bigger lots, it will start being organized by numbers because it's just going to get insane. So that's the plan. We'll see if it actually goes as planned. Uh, things sometimes never do when it comes to organizing Lego, as you guys probably know. So just to look at some of these bins, like a whole bin of blue two by three plate, uh, five or first battle pack. <laughs> that, yeah, say no more, five or first battle pack. Uh, I, I think those blue two by eight plates came from the five or first set as well. Uh, so everything's colorized. Um, so if I pull an order, I go by the, the, the name on the part. So I go by color first and then I go by the first name. So if it's black plate or dark blue straight bar, all the bars are in there. So BrickLink basically tells you what every part is. You just have to follow it. So if it's dark blue straight plate, there's dark blue straight plate. So I really try to keep it very simple. Um, but if you don't know your parts well, or if you don't know all the modified parts and the different versions of parts, it can get really complex. And I always recommend the numbered system where you just number all bins. You pull that bin number and, and move on. But if you're really knowledgeable with Lego, you can use this method as well. And it's pretty effective and actually pretty fast. So as we go down the row, I have my bigger lots up. As you can see, it's, it's all one part in, in one bin. So like that's all translate blue one by two tile, which is pretty nuts. Um, and then so on and so forth. I start out with smaller lots in the bins and then as they get into bigger quantities, I just, I move them up into bigger bins, basically. Down here is overflow. So this is just stuff that's literally overflown. So it's just stuff from different bins that I don't have a place for or don't have a bin for. So I just throw overflow, I throw overflow on the remarks and I know how to look in overflow. And typically this stuff is moving so quick I can move labels around pretty well. So that's all the overflow stuff. And then as you can see, I have this gigantic table here in the middle of the room. It's so easy and convenient to have a table. As you can see, I already have kind of like an order process ready for setup. Um, I can just put parts here on the table. I've got my Chromebook. I just use a Chromebook. I just need to get on, on Google Chrome and, and find the BrickLink order list pretty easily. Nothing crazy here. My bag system, uh, and then the order cards with order numbers ready to go, and the Blaine's World sticker. So you do get a Blaine's World sticker. Be sure to ask for one in the order. And I just reach, pull the bin. Sometimes I, I like to stand and I'll put it here and pull parts, or I just throw it on the table, pull the bin, pull the part back in. And then as you can see, everything kind of goes around the table so I can easily get to where I need to go within a few steps, which is pretty cool. So all of these bins came from Walmart actually. Um, they've gone up in price since I first started. Some of these bins I still have from when I first started and it just expanded. I have no, how, I, don't know, I don't know how many bins I have. I would say at least 200 bins, maybe 300, just different individual bins, uh, I would say, because it starts literally from the floor and almost touches the entire ceiling. So it, full, it, it fills up the entire room. 
um, as much as possible. So, uh, and it's still effective. Um, I do have a step ladder over on this side of the room. I have an official step ladder. I, I felt so accomplished when I had that, where I'm just going up on shelves. It made me feel like a real like store, you know, like a warehouse. <laughs> Uh, and then pick a brick cups for sorting. I just use pab cups because they're fun to use. I do have some smaller cups here too. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the table's big enough where it can hold most part outs. Um, some of the bigger part outs I kind of get. I, I sometimes consolidate into bins first a little bit as I go. Uh, but typically all the part outs are here on the, the sorting table and it's pretty accessible around the room. So yeah, that's this is the main room for the BrickLink store. This is where all of the parts are held. Uh, the other room, which is my personal bedroom, has basically just like packing supplies and some sealed sets. Uh, and then the, my PC setup where I, ha I basically do all my work just on my computer. We'll see that a little later in the video. Over here is a packing closet and it's a mess. Um, it's actually organized, um, even though it may not look like it. There's bubble mailers everywhere. Uh, Blaine's World on just BrickLink alone does about 3,000 orders a year, or at least this year it's on pace to do 3,000 orders. So that's a lot of <laughs> tape and packing materials and bubble mailers and bags. So yeah, I uh, this is all my shipment of bag, or excuse me, uh, envelopes. And I have four different size envelopes. These are the smallest eight by four envelopes. And then like 10 by six, 12 by eight is back there. And then these are in clutch. If you don't know about this, these are free. You can order these on the USPS website. They're free. Priority mail padded flat rate envelope. You ship this anywhere in the country for $8.95 at the time of this video. Um, pretty cool. You can fit like two pounds of stuff in this and you, you, they're free to order. So they're priority mail padded flat rate envelopes by USPS. Pretty neat, $8.95. Definitely have this as an option in your store because shipping, when you're competing against other stores, you want cheap shipping. And then my massive bag of packing peanuts, as you can see, um, I think it's, I don't know, it doesn't weigh much, of course, because they're packing peanuts and they're like just overflowing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I that was fun trying to wedge it in that closet, so. Okay, so this is basically the main BrickLink store room. This is the room that the, all the parts basically fill up. And even, it's so filled up that even between where I sit, there's just massive bins of stuff. So there's two full bins of light blue screen masonry. I think there's like 18,000 like blue screen masonry brick in those two bins. So there's Lego everywhere, but as you can see, I can still get to everything pretty conveniently. So it hasn't really affected the store and operating, but as I move into the new spot, um, it's going to become a lot bigger and a little bit more effective, I guess, of filling orders. So now I'm gonna show you basically my personal bedroom and where the rest of the stuff has just overflowed into there. Okay, so this is my personal bedroom and this is the third room I was talking about. And this is where the overflow management really starts showing of why I need a new spot, which I'm already looking for a new spot. Should be there in the next six or eight months. We'll see timetable wise. Um, yeah, that is where I sleep. And that is all my packing supplies from the store. Way more, much more bubble mailers, a ton of bags from Uline. Um, so all my bags come from Uline and then bubble mailers uh, come from Royal Mailers. It's a website, really cool free shipping. Um, so yeah, I have to order in bulk because of just so much, so many orders that the store has, but I have nowhere to put it. So my personal bedroom is now uh, a bubble mailer store. store. And uh, some sealed sets, I have about 60 Mandalorian battle packs there. And then uh, just some other sets I picked up for cheap, some Harry Potter stuff. I like the car stuff offered by Lego Technic. Up under my bed, <laughs> I actually sleep on more Lego. Um, I have a Republic gunship, two Bugattis, and a Lamborghini that I sleep on every night. Pretty crazy. So this is my personal bedroom, and then this is kind of the place where I work and wind down and maybe watch movies or something too. Um, so I get most of my work done here on my PC setup. I do have a label printer here as well, so I print the labels here. They come out from the label printer. I have a scanner, uh, basically everything I need to do business with, and they go into that Blaine's World bin there for the smaller packages. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, PC stuff. All you PC nerds, this is my, my baby for uh, work. So yeah, um, 3070 graphics card, so pretty fun when I have time, when I have time, yeah. Um, so I do have a couple of personal sets. As you can see, the Lord of the Rings Tower of Orthic sits right beside me as I do my work. It's a little dusty. It's been in the collection for a long time, but it actually fits the setup very well. 
Um, so yeah, I, I have that that I can look at every day and I don't have a lot of personal sets as much anymore, but this is one of my all time favorite sets and I love Lord of the Rings. So it just kind of goes together. And I got the, the Blaine's World mascot sitting right here as well. So that's, that's George. Yeah. So yeah, it's just some cool stuff, but it definitely has uh, leaked into my personal bedroom quite much. But you know what? When you are self-employed and run your own business, sometimes you make sacrifices. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't mind it, but uh, there's a lot of bubble mailers in here. So I have to see a lot of bubble mailers when I wake up at night. <laughs> so that wraps up today's video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Of course, all links to Blaine's Brickling store and Instagram will be down below in the description. Now, before we head out, I do want to give Blaine a quick question for tips for some of you guys. So Blaine, if you were starting off clean slate, nothing right now, knowing what you know in your past 10 plus years of Bricklink, what are the first three things that you would do to start your own store? Three things I would do for stock in general is look for any good part out deal that has good gray parts or parts that hit a lot of wanted lists. So I, you know, look for that um, and just start having a lot of selection because selection always brings a lot of orders. So you may not make a lot with just one or two lots, mm -hmm. but you want to bring those customers in. They like your store and they'll be back and they'll favorite your store and when they hit that wanted list. Now it's favorited and your store is going to come to the very top. Start hitting that selection. That was only one. That was only one. Ooh, okay, okay. <laughs> Getting number, ahead of ourselves. Number two, number two. Number two, start creating connections between the rest of the Lego community. Very important. Very, reach out to mock builders. Reach out to other sellers. Start creating that network because you will definitely need it as you continue to grow. So that's number two. I would say number three is kind of what I was talking about connections, but build up your socials. Don't just list stuff on BrickLink and go to sleep. Um, Bricklink and Brick Owl and I know a lot of people are on Whatnot now mm. have a lot of different avenues of income. Don't just rely off of Bricklink. I put a lot on Bricklink because everybody comes to my store is a lot of interest. But definitely start being on different platforms and see what works for you the most, and then see what platform really starts taking off, and maybe that will be your primary platform. So start getting the feels of the market. Don't just be one dimensional. I would say. Awesome, yeah, appreciate it, man. Thank you for showing us around. Like I said, if you guys did enjoy, drop a like down below, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Take it easy. Peace.